for you. Uh, I went. I was going to say, well, to start a betting pool off of my it is. Up there. I've done it a couple times, so don't worry. All right, we'll get this started. Good evening. This is Perrysburg City Council for October 5th, 2021. Is it on? Is it on? Yep, yep you're good. Um, I'm Tom Mackin, the mayor of Perrysburg. I will start the roll call. Ms. Boyd? <coughs> Here. Mr. Kuhlman? Here. Ms. Matoni? Here. Mr. McCarthy? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Van Usen? Here. Mr. Weber? Here. Please uh, join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand if you are able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, minutes of council meeting from September 21st. Thank you, Mayor. We, everyone has received a copy of the meeting minutes. Uh, at this point, I would like to make a mo motion to approve the meeting minutes held on September 21st, 2020 as written and dispensed with the reading. Second. Roll call. Ms. Bourne? Yes. Mr. Kuhlman? Yes. Ms. Maturney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Usen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. We have no special reports today. Letters, communication, assistance, concerns. Seeing none, we'll move on to administrative reports. I have no report uh, other than to encourage everyone to vote. Uh, voting has officially started, so please uh, vote. City Administrator? No report. Finance Director? No report. Can't wait for that first one. <laughs> and uh, Law Director? No report. Administration is efficiently moving right along. President of Council. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a report, but I do have a question. I know there was some conversations uh, setting up a meeting with the uh, Perrysburg Heights Association, the consultants for the land use plan, and just looking to see if we've had any dates pinned down yet or where things are. I know there's been some inquiries that several of us on Council have received on that. Uh, to my knowledge, no date has been set yet. We're still waiting on the consultant to respond. Okay. Right. And make sure that that date aligns with Mr. Velazquez. I believe that they are speaking on Friday to try and confirm that date. Okay. It, it, this is going to be a um, special meeting, or is this going to be something during the actual council meeting? It would be separate. It would not be at 6.30 on a Tuesday. Okay. If it was on a Tuesday, it would be at 5.30. Is there a way, possibility, if there's some dates that are thrown out there, to at least let council know? Because if we're going to potentially be there, if that's a council committee, the whole I think would be important for us to make certain that we can be here. I will let her know before I schedule it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. That is all for me. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to committee reports, finance, and economic development. Thank you, Mayor. I have no report. Our next meeting is Tuesday, October twelfth at five thirty p.m. Safety committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do not have a report either. Um, our next meeting is Tuesday, October 26th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Uh, Recreation committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A no report, October 12th, 2021 at 6 30 p.m. is our next meeting. Thank you. Planning and zoning. Um, <coughs> no report here. Next on October 17th at 5 30 p.m. Thank you. Personnel committee? Uh, no report. Next meeting is October 26th at 5 p.m. Public utility. Thank you, Mayor. I do actually have a report here today. Uh, we did meet on September 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Um, members present were myself, Ms. Van Turney, Mr. Van Hoosen, and also present was Ms. Cabot City Administrator, Ms. Sandretta, Law Director, and Ms. Godsey, the Director of Public Utilities. Um, we, through the meeting minutes, uh, we had a sewer credit appeal for 26693 of Greenville Drive. William Schultz is looking to get an appeal for the sewer bill in the amount of $1,604.94. Uh, Ms. Godsey explained that it is a, was a sump pump failure and confirmed that a dye test that the water does go to the st uh, storm sewer was a water backup. The committee agreed 3-0 to recommend approval of the sewer adjustment. So at this time, I would like to make a motion to approve the sewer credit appeal in the amount of $1,604.94 for 26693 Greenville Drive. Second. Second. 
A roll call. Ms. Bourne? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Husen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. All right. Uh, the next item that we've discussed was the sewer credits tabulation. Um, and those are all, for those who are not aware, is any credit that is under $1,000 is authorized by the, the Director of Public Utilities to authorize those credits. And those are reported to the committee on a uh, monthly basis. Uh, next item, we talked about the water and sewage rate study uh, draft. So this is the first draft. We'll have another presentation next month. The presentation was by Michael Maker, for, who is the executive consultant with New Gen Strategies and Solutions. The water and sewer system must be financially uh, self-supporting. Water should not subsidize sewer and vice versa. The water and, and sewer rates should be kept as low as possible over time. Uh, so this recommendation uh, that they came up with was to adopt an alternative charges and rates for the planning period over the next five years. Uh, Mr. Smith had asked about the rates uh, for City of Toledo water and stated the difference is what it costs each community to deliver it into their homes. Um, uh, what we had found out is that the water rate increase coming from the city of Toledo is included within those rates increases. Uh, Mr. Smith also stated that he was under the impression the rates were supposed to be relatively equal amongst the different communities. Um, Ms. Gotch to say the end rate is going to be shown and that we will be still in that rate transition period until 2027 or costs will be going up 11% and the incorporation into the rate. Uh, Mr. Van Hoosen had asked about the reserve for capital as mandated or recommended. Mr. Maker stated that an average year's worth of capital was a good measure for reserve. Mr. Van Hoosen had asked about the water usage and the gross amounts. Mr. Maker explained that people have low flow fixtures, smaller house sizes, and conservation be, being education to contribute to usage not increasing. Uh, so with that, uh, usage is not increasing even though growth has been increasing. Uh, Ms. Materni asked if the cost of water was built into the cost of treating the water. Mr. Smith had asked about the EPA agreement that we have regarding the overflows and that there are still some unknowns that we have out there and what contingencies do we have in place if something significant comes in. Ms. Gossi said that they have some CSO abatement costs factored into the capital improvement program for the next five years. Mr. Smith asked about the $1.6 million for water line replacements for the central part of the city. Ms. Gossi said the water main replacements in the capital improvement program of the water side and that it will not quite be finished in the five years. Mr. Van Hoosen asked about the inside versus outside rate for Perrysburg. Ms. Andretto said that the city charges a different rate for individuals that live outside of the city, but the city of Perrysburg, than what the, uh, those in the city of Perrysburg are charged. Mr. Smith asked about revenue savings. Uh, Ms. Cabot said that it is designed and ready to bid. Uh, Ms. Gossi said that the report would be presented for the October meeting. Ms. Andretto asked Mr. Maker if he is contracted to present this to city council, and he said yes. Uh, Ms. Andretto stated that there is a bill issue. Uh, contract was not to exceed 44300 and they would like to add 9900 due to some additional changes in the scope. Ms. Cabot stated that we had some technical issues and caused us to spend more hours on this. Ms. Godsey stated that some of the work had to be duplicated with the new information provided. Mr. Van Hoosen thinks this is important for council to see and the committee agree 3-0 to re recommend this to city council. Uh, in other business, um, Mr. Smith asked about fire hydrants and uh, why the tops are painted white because they could be hard to find in a snowstorm. Ms. Cabot stated that sometimes the yellow top versus a white top tells people the size of the pipe underneath. Was not sure if this was applied throughout the city. There being no further business, the meeting adjourned at 7.13 p.m. And I do have a uh, ordinance here to introduce. Uh, actually, excuse me, resolution. So, with that being said, I would like to introduce Resolution 56 2021 and move the rules be suspended to allow first reading by number and title only and dispense with the second and third readings. Mr. Second. Roll call. Ms. Bourne? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Resolution 56 2021. A resolution amending Resolution 25 2020 and authorizing change order number one to the agreement and an amount not to exceed $9,900 for the water and sewer rate study and declaring an emergency. I move that resolution 56 2021 be passed as an emergency measure. I have discussion. We need a second. Here. Second. Okay, discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to have to say that I'm going to be voting no on this. I'm sorry, but um, Next Gen knew that they were voting, that they knew when they bid on this it was forty four thousand three hundred dollars it was in the council packet from april 13th 2020 
it showed various bids, and 44300 is what NextGen bid. Um, I don't believe that almost $10,000 is appropriate, and it's not acceptable, so I will not be voting for this. I just asked we get an explanation on the, what, the, the new charges, if we can. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, President uh, Smith, the, um, this began in 2020. The test to retrieve the billing and consumption data from the new software, the new billing software, which was BSNA, began in, uh, was tried for the first time in 2020. That was new software that was, um, was purchased and implemented in 2019. So in 2020, this was our first go around of retrieving data. It was more difficult to retrieve that data than anticipated in a form and format that was usable by the consultants. And it uh, took the city longer to retrieve that than anticipated. And then it took the consultants longer than anticipated to, um, to process that data. Um, the retrieval extended into 2021 and their development of the expense and revenue model extended into 2021 uh, by, by mid-2021. And at that time, the city was working on their 2022 budget and um, the uh, information was, uh, was submitted to new gen and, uh, and new information came in during this process, the Fishbeck Wastewater Treatment Plan Capital Improvements Planning Report came in that had capital improvement projections into this five-year period. And the um, Water Master Plan from Arcadis came in during this time, which also spelled out new capital improvement programming that affected the rates. And so NewGen had to recalculate some of the work that they had already completed. Um, and they had to revise their expense forecasts that were in the model. So we're, in other words, we're getting better data and we, we more compiled updated. more information, we're getting better data yes. with this extra expenditure. Yes. Alice, they, mm -hmm. they actually exceeded the scope of the contract and for the good by the additional data we gave them. Yes, and we have projections up to the year 2026, which we would, it's another year into the future, which we would not have had um, if it had completed on time. Plus he's throwing in the council briefing that it's on them. Yes, that's included in this uh, right. Thank you. fee adjustment. Any other questions? If not, uh, roll call. Ms. Gorn? No. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Heusen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Our next scheduled meeting is going to be on October 27th at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. End of my report. Service committee? Best for last. <laughs> yes, best for last. The meeting was called to order at 534 by Chairperson Jam Attorney. Uh, committee members present were Corey Coleman, Jam Attorney Jonathan Smith, also present were Bridget Cabot and Kate Sangretto, Law Director. No citizen concerns, approval. There being no objections, the minutes were approved. Um, Ms. Sangretto stated that the housekeeping measure that is required when the plat is open is ready for development to build homes on it. Um, let me back up. Uh, we uh, discussed the acceptance of Hawthorne Plot Plat 7, um, and Ms. Sandretto stated that this is a housekeeping measure that is required when the plat is ready for the development to build developer to build homes on it. Mr. Coleman asked if they are moving along as scheduled concerning lumber. Ms. Cabot stated that Hawthorne is moving along as scheduled. Mr. Smith asked about the land use plan study with developments and how a portion of the funding goes towards park improvements. Mr. Smith mentioned the lack of parks further west in Perrysburg. Mr. Coleman agreed and said that somewhere near Hull Prairie would be nice. Ms. Maturi stated that as long as the developers are meeting zoning requirements, their hands are tied. 
the committee agreed three to zero to forward this to council. Review of sidewalk, driveway, contractor's bond. Ms. Maturney asked when the last time that the bond was reviewed. Ms. 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 Sandrillo stated 1979. Mr. Smith stated that he had seen work being done in the right of way with no repairs being done and it is a safety hazard affecting walkability and pedestrian traffic in our community. Mr. Smith also stated that it would behoove us to have the right bonds in there and require repairs be done in a timely manner so as not to burden, not a burden on the taxpayers. Mr. Coleman and Ms. Maturney agreed. Mr. Coleman stated that the contract, certain contractors do not pull permits and that it would be great to have a list of contractors that are bonded with the city, have reviewed code and will be compliant with it. Other business, relating to sidewalks, Mr. Coleman wondered if there's a way that we could somehow let people know of the lift and repair project and make it known that this type of service is not common in every city, i.e. the city pays for it. Mr. Smith wanted, that's, that's not in the minutes, that's my explanation of that little. Mr. Smith wanted to follow up on the recycling program that he appreciates the stickers on the totes. Ms. Cabot will ask Rob Ross about the glass recycling and the IOI is pleased with the turnout. Mr. Smith asked about the city's glass drop off and if there's anything we can do to have it unlocked later into the evening. Mr. Smith also asked about trash collection at the parks over Labor Day weekend. Ms. Cabot stated that they are out every weekend for multiple hours collecting trash at the parks and even looking into having a recycler tow at Rotary, Rotary Park. Mr. Coleman asked about the place, about placing the trash cans elsewhere if it's not receiving a ton of traffic. And as Cabot stated, the problem was not just on Labor Day weekend and they're looking into it. There being no further business, the meeting adjourned at 6-11. And as stated earlier, um, i bring it forth. I would like to introduce Ordinance 53-2021 and move that the rules be suspended for allow for its reading by number and title only and dispense with the second third readings. Second. Roll call. Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Ms. Maturney. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Ordinance 53-2021. Accepting roads, alleys, and green space per codified ordinance 1295.07 and declaring an emergency. I move that ordinance 53 2021 be passed and it's an emergency measure. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Maturney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Ms. Bourne? Yes. Our next meeting is Wednesday, October 27th at 5.30 p.m. Thank That's you. all I have. Uh, any other business before the council? Just one thing. Sure. Uh, just a, a status update on where we are with information about streaming uh, the city council meetings and committees. Well, I think this is the last maybe a month or two ago. So working on this building is not very good at technological type issues and uh, that's one of the things we want to make sure we improve and do some redevelopment of the building and of a new building. So um, I'll have Bridget answer any, any more details on that. And we are posting it tomorrow, tomorrow will be posted a YouTube video of it, but we have some, because of the walls and some other things, uh, it doesn't work so great. Oh, and I, yeah, I understood that was the, the what was said last time, but I think she also said she was going to ask the IT guy what, what kind of instruments we could do, a timetable on that. Yeah, in terms of this, in this building, we're putting in additional AV equipment because it's not IT equipment, it was AV equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, that coupled with the new recording secretary, we want to make sure has all her processes down. We could discuss possibly trying to stream it, but again, there's uh, a lot of technology that goes into it, that equipment that we don't currently have, that we would have to have an AV company come in and set the room up to the best of their ability. That. Okay. Are, are we looking into that? Are we going to get a quote yes, on that? Our IT manager is looking into that. There's okay. A company called Pro Video. Okay. Because that's that's just one of those constant complaints. I, you know, you'll see on the internet. You'll see or when I'm talking to people. So if we could get a time frame to kind of get nailed down or a quote okay, so that we have that information. I'll try to get that to you this week. Awesome. Thank you. I have one uh, one thing I'd like to add, but separate from what Corey was saying, I attended the boat club opening over the weekend. And it was really terrific, and I'm really happy for them. They've been in existence since 1937 and a great historic part of our 
fabric. So I'm so happy that they're here. And it's a great building. Thank you. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no objections? We are adjourned. What's up? Uh, you don't know how to mess it up, man. It's... <laughs> <laughs>